Good afternoon to all the viewers and welcome back to YCC Live, World Class Culinary Online. Today, we have the second session in the series of webinars on Mediterranean cuisine, and we'll be covering the flavors of Spain. I will now hand over to our host, Shanaz Raja, Director of Courses at the ICCA Dubai. Over to you, Shanaz. Thank you, Karun. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Trist with Chef Sergio from our Faculty of Cookery here at the International Center for Culinary Arts in Dubai. The last week has been very hectic for Chef Sergio, getting from Portugal to Spain in time for this webinar. Today, he is going to give us a taste of a delicious and refreshing gazpacho, followed by a sumptuous seafood paella. Chef Sergio, as we came to know during our last webinar, does not cook for his family. However, he began his journey with food as a teenager and since graduating from culinary school has begun his career at the magnificent Michelangelo Hotel in Joburg and has been cooking for non-family for the past 12 years now. Chef Sergio, we look forward to enjoying this webinar with you and do try to push the flavors and aroma through to us. Over to you, Chef Sergio. Thank you. Once again, a lovely introduction from Shanaz. Thank you very much. And Bortadde, welcome to RTCA Live, my second episode of the journey around the Mediterranean. And today I have Chef Marcial, another one of my students, which is part of our professional diploma program, who will be assisting me today. Today I have truly two awesome dishes that I'm going to share with you. Firstly, I'm going to make a lovely appetizer, which is a traditional gazpacho. And then I have another traditional dish, which is our seafood paella. Right, so shall we get started, Chef? Yes, Chef. Let's do it. So firstly, I'm just going to go through some of my ingredients that we have for our paella. Right, so we have our onions, garlic, tomatoes, red bell peppers, olive oil, red wine. I have some beautiful saffron. We got some bomba rice. We have some now perch fish, some mussels, some beautiful clams, some lovely shrimp, some calamari or squid, and some lemons and some green peas. So lots of interesting flavors going into our paella today. Let's not forget that we also have a lovely infused chicken stock, which I have infused already. So, shall we get started? Yes, sir. Okay, so this looks like this is going. Let's just pop this a little bit higher. So firstly, what I'm going to start with is some beautiful extra virgin olive oil. We're just going to throw some in the pan. Don't be shy. Put some in there. Fantastic. Right. Then we are going to go with some onions. Throw that in, oh, this is just going to be so lovely. So I maybe just push that down just a little. Yep, stir that up a little. Right, we're going to throw in some garlic. Great. Then we're just going to want to stir that up a little bit. You don't want to burn it, so make sure that your heat isn't too high. Right, medium to high, that's perfect, Chef. Just keep stirring that up for us. Great, you just want to actually get it a little bit caramelized, yeah? So not too much color. Right there, I'm going to throw in some bell peppers, just for that lovely red color and all those beautiful flavors. Great, mix that all up in there, Chef. Okay, make sure that some of those peppers are getting nice and soft. Watch that over there. Perfect. Right, once we give that a little saute for a good 30 seconds, up to a minute, yeah, that is when we are going to throw in our tomatoes. So the tomatoes, I have taken the skin off and I have de-seeded them and chopped them up. So we like to call it tomato concasse. Right, so that's in there. Let that all sweat up together. Let all those flavors come out which will be great. Awesome, that is smelling great already. What do you think, Chef? It smells pretty good. It's smelling yeah. good already, yeah? 
All right, so for our stock, okay, we're really using chicken stock today. I'm going to be taking my, well, I have already done it, but we've got our saffron strands. What I like to do is actually take my saffron strands and put it into a pan and just give it a light toast. Now, when I mean by light toast, we mean you can even use your finger with the saffron. That's how it mustn't even be on a high heat. And you just give the saffron a little bit of a toast and then you add it into your chicken stock. Right, that's going to infuse the chicken stock. It's going to give a lovely color as well. And then we're going to get a lovely color in there as well. So that is in. Right, so Chef, do you just want to give that a quick stir? I'll take over from now from you. Right, just give that a lovely little stir. I have infused my chicken stock already. So I'm just adding extra flavor by adding in the saffron. Right. So now when your vegetables are actually like literally 40% cooked, right, that everything is starting to smell, you can smell all those lovely natural flavors coming out, that is your telltale sign to actually start adding in your rice. Right. So, I think we're about there. I'm going to be adding in my rice now. The rice I'm using is called a bomba rice. All right, it is a very short grain rice. Okay, so it's the traditional rice used for a paella. What we're just going to do is throw that in. Fantastic. Give that a little stir up. Right, I'm just going to deglaze my pan with a little bit of white wine. Now, I am using non alcoholic white wine today. So just let all those flavors come in. Toast that rice up a little bit. Don't worry about it, Chef. Let it cook. Let it cook. At the end of the day, we actually want to get something called a sukurat, which I will touch up about it a little bit later. Right? Yeah, look at that. Just give it a great little stir. Let that rice toast up a little bit. That is looking great. Right. So once all that wine has actually soaked up by the rice, that is when... Maybe just want to turn this down just a little bit. Ooh, there we are. Fantastic. Okay, so now that our rice is in and it's looking great, this is when we are going to be taking our stock. This is the first time that you're going to be adding quite a lot of stock in here. Right, so I'm just going to add one ladle. You can see that color already of the infused saffron into my stock. It's all lovely. So this is the first time that you're actually going to be adding quite a bit of stock. It's a little bit like making risotto to a certain degree. So you add your stock in the first time quite a bit. Right, that's more than enough for now. Please bring it over. Here we are. We've got a bright chair. We're just going to give it a nice stir. Let it all go in. It's a little bit of a patient cooking dish as well because you actually have to... Um, Watch what you're doing, and you have to keep adding stock as you go. It's not like cooking basmati rice or anything. Right, so now, oh, those flavors are just coming out. The color is, yeah. the color is fantastic, isn't yes. it? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's going there. Fantastic now. So I'm going to be adding in a little bit of paprika right about now. Just going to sprinkle just a little bit in there. Just infuse a little bit. Right, you may just give that a little stir up again, Chef. Thank you. Right, so, a little history about paella. Um, paella traditionally comes from a city in Valencia, all right? Apparently, they like to say that they make the best paella in Spain, which I pretty much agree with them. Today, I'm just going fully seafood. In Valencia, they like to add all the types of seafood. They love to add chorizo in there little bit of chicken, traditionally some rabbits as well, which really, I mean, once you actually go to Spain and you actually go to, you know, one of those little stands outside where they're actually serving paella, my, it's just ridiculous. I mean, there's a queue of people lining up for this fantastic paella and they'll queue up for 30, 40 minutes waiting for a bowl of this great paella. Right, so that is looking great. The liquid will start getting a little bit thicker as well, okay? Um, obviously, paella, um, bomba rice is actually one of the rice out there that actually absorbs most of the liquid. 
It is one of the rices that absorbs most of the liquid, more than any other rices. So always be a little bit cautious and never let your paella actually dry out. Exactly how Marcial is doing. One little thing I like to do when I know where to add is, I push it down. And if I don't see liquid or I see liquid is actually not there anymore, that's when I start adding ladle by ladle. And within the next 30 odd minutes, we should be done, definitely. Right, so all we wanna do now is actually just cook our paella for at least a good 10 to 12 minutes, I would say. And then we're gonna start adding in our seafood on top. We'll put a lid on it and actually just let everything come together, all those flavors infuse our seafood as well. Right, so who makes the best paella? I'm not sure. Really, maybe the, the people from Valencia, but a whole bunch of you, there's so many different varieties of paella out in these days. I mean, something I want to really try out at the moment is um, a black squid paella. So you take the squid ink and you throw it into the paella and it becomes black. Have you ever seen that, Chef? Yes, sir. You have? Have you tried it before? No, sir. Not. Never? Okay, I think we, we got to make it for lunch one day, most definitely. But I mean, there's so many... There's no wrong paella out there at the end of the day. Um, most of the times, even when my family, we've made paella, um, we've used whatever we have left over in our fridges. That's what's so great about this dish. And serving this dish on a lovely Sunday afternoon with a lovely glass of white wine, if you're into it, it's just on another level of fantastic, honestly. Right, so now that's going. I can see that the rice has absorbed a lot of we're actually just going to put this up just a little. Right, you want it to like a medium, medium to hot. Right, see that's going there. Right, so we're just going to add a little bit more stuff in here now. Just a little bit of that ladle. You can see how nice and beautiful that color has come because of all that saffron that's infused my chicken stock. So that's looking great. Give it a little mix, get it in there, chef. Right, so traditionally as well, when they make paella, normally I have seen another technique that they've done. So they actually dug out a hole in the ground and then they actually got a whole bunch of wood and pine cones and coal and they lit it up and all those flavors from the bottom of the ground came up and literally you get your big paella pan as I have over here, put it on outside, put everything that you need inside your pan and you just let it cook for about 30 minutes to one hour. I mean, wow, what a great smell. Can you just imagine cooking this outside over a big pan like this for your family of 10 or 12? That must just be totally, totally amazing. Right, so yeah, the taste, especially of the pine cones as well. I was just amazed when I actually saw that. So now what I like doing with my seafood um, I actually like to just season my seafood a little bit, right? So I do have a bowl over here. But Marcia, do you just want to get me the salt and the pepper, please? Right, so now with my seafood, like I said, I've got some now perch, yeah? I've got some squid, which is lovely. Right, I have some mussels and some clams. In the recipe, you'll see with my clams, obviously we'll buy them when they're still alive. Right, and then you actually get some butter, get some white wine. There's different techniques of how to actually get them open. I would like, I normally do it in a little bit of butter, some white wine, saute it in there, and they'll all pop open. Yeah, and then you can give it a little rinse if you like. There's always a little bit of grit that comes inside. But definitely, if they do not open, then definitely discard of them. Okay, thank you very much, Chef. So, there we are, Marcial is on it. Throwing a little bit more stock, you can actually see all the grains of rice actually already starting to pop. Right, so I'm gonna start with my Nile perch. I'm gonna throw that in a bowl. Okay, and all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add just the basic little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt right because i find as if you just add it in straight up yes you're going to get a beautiful taste from all the flavors and all the infusion happening but i find if you keep adding salt and pepper on top on top on top of your fish you can actually get a little bit of a salty product 
So I'll just season it up a little bit. Right, that's great. I'm going to leave it just for, I think we're about there. I think we can actually start putting that in already. I'll just throw just a little bit more stock in there. Great, you can actually push up the heat up to three there, pre chef. Right, so at this point, I'm going to start throwing in my fish. Right, don't worry about where to place the fish. This is a very rustic dish as well. So where it lands, let it sit. There's no problem in that. Okay, oh, this is going to be so delicious. Right, so that's going in. That is beautiful. I mean, on a dish like this, this could easily serve about six to seven people, easily, I would say. Right, I uh, can leave that one. On to my next one that I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I've got my squid, right? The squid, I'm not going to add in immediately right now. I'd rather add that in last, right? Adding them in too early, um, it can get a little bit tough to be complete. On this. So I'll just give it a little, a little bit of a marinade and maybe just take a little lemon and just give that a little squeeze in there. Just give that a little, little flavor. Right. So I'll just leave that on the side. Great. Now, with my prawns, okay, I've got beautiful shrimp over here. They, these are, I would say, on the size of 16 30s, so when you buy prawns at the shops, all right, normally there's always a code, either 816s, 1020s, 1630s. Those codes actually mean, when you get a 1630 prawn, it actually means that you will get 16 to 30 prawns out of one kilogram. So don't get confused, now you know. So especially if you want to buy big tiger prawns and it comes up to four eights, it means you will get four to eight prawns out of one kilogram. Yeah, so these ones here, these are about, I would say, 16, 30. So between 16 to 30 prawns for one kilogram. Right, so now you've got to be careful. You need to look at your paella. If you start seeing some of that liquid go, this is my telltale sign. I like pushing it just a little bit like that. If I don't see much liquid, I start to add. So, start adding again, Chef. Great. Fantastic. You can add just a little bit more. I'm going to be taking my shrimp now. And I'm just going to be layering them down. Then with the shrimp, you can have a little bit more patience and actually try and put them all on the same side. Yeah? And just layer them all nice and pretty. Oh, this is just going to get... So awesome. Now, some of you might be actually asking, okay, well, could we use another stock maybe? Yes, definitely. You could use a bit of a fish stock. I like using fish stock as well. Just depends on the fish stock you have. If you boil the fish stock for too long, um, your paella can get a little bit um, bitter, if I were to say that. Um, one of my other colleagues, once she made a uh, Paella, and what she did, we had a whole bunch of leftover shells of prawns. So she decided to throw that in the oven, and she just gave that a little bit of a cook. And like you would make a bisque, she actually made her fish stock from those prawn shells, and it became like a very bisky kind of stock, which just gave the paella such a beautiful, beautiful flavor. Right, so that's going in. That is looking great. Do you want to carry on? Yes, Go for it. Okay, so that's looking great. What I am going to do though, I'm just going to tweak this just a little bit like that and see there's a little bit more heat on that side. Great. Okay, so last ingredients that we will add in there, I'm just going to leave all my seafood over here. Okay, now while that's actually going to start finishing up, I am going to start with another classical soup which is called the gazpacho. Now, I'm sure we have a poll coming up, right? Over to you, Michelez. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I've been waiting to publish this poll. I've been waiting to get this poll across to them. 
Okay, the word paya comes from the Valencian word that means. See, I knew they would all get it wrong, so I was waiting to put it out. Chef Sergio, can you see the screen? Is the poll visible to you? Is the poll visible to you, Chef? I'm still struggling to hear. Chef, can you hear me? Hmm. Can you hear me now, Chef? Yes, I am live. I can hear you, Missionaries. Okay, so uh, it was initially 100% uh, see, mix of seafood and meat, but slowly they've changed their mind and we've got a few different answers. So we have about 36% to say a frying pan, 45% to say seafood and meat, and 18% to say a particular method of cooking. So which one okay. is it? So paella is actually the right answer is the last one, the frying pan. Traditionally, it is called the frying pan. You were actually telling me earlier on from the Dominican Republic, you have another word for it? Yes, um, it's called paella. Paella, okay. Yeah, so very similar, yes, but a little similar. bit different, yeah? Yes, okay, so traditionally, yes, it needs the frying pan. When making a paella, there are three fundamentals that you need to know about a paella. You need a good pan, most definitely a paella pan. You need a good rice. And the most important part of a good paella is the sukurat. I say sukurat. How would you say it, Chef? Sacarat. Sacarat. All right. More in the Spanish. All right. So that means the caramelization at the bottom of your pan. Every family member will actually fight for that beautiful caramelized rice at the bottom of your pan. So three main things that you need in a good paella is a pan, your bomba rice, and definitely the sukurats. But the right answer there, ma'am, is the frying pan. Okay. I think I'm off again. No, no, I, I just didn't talk because I thought you're going to continue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So our yeah. paella is going beautifully, right? So now that I've already cooked my clams and I've cooked a little bit of my mussels, I am going to actually add the rest of that in the next minute or two. Actually, we can actually start with the mussels. So the mussels, we'll just throw in and just push it into the rice there and there and just give it a little bit of height there, Chef. Thank you. Right, so now moving on to our traditional, traditional um, gazpacho. Right, so I'll bring over my ingredients over here for my gazpacho. Now, for those of you that have never had a gazpacho before, you are missing out on something really, really delicious. It is a cold soup. Yeah? Right, so what shall we need to make a lovely gazpacho? So, we need some tomato juice. Yes, some lovely extra virgin olive oil some apple cider vinegar, or lemon juice, or cherry vinegar, any vinegar that you actually want to use, that is not a problem, but you need some, a little bit of acidity, yeah? Okay, we've got some garlic cloves, I've got some concasse tomatoes, I've got some red bell peppers, some cucumber, some onion, some iced water, and some bread soaked in water. Right, so let's get started with this. Right, so you're going to need a blender, okay? With this, let's pop this like this. You can actually add the clams as well, quickly. You can add the clams in. Let's add some more stock in there before it all dries out. Right, you've got to keep adding liquid into your paella or else it will dry out. Sometimes you want to give it a good little shape. That's fine, right? Unless you've got a really, really awesome... Um, I forgot the word, induction, all right? You don't really want to scratch it or else you're going to scratch your glass and that is not that pretty. These I'm just going to 
put it all over the place. Yeah, like that shit. Awesome. Let's put it everywhere. Make it look all rustic. Go for it. Pop that everywhere. Then we'll add our clams in. We'll sprinkle our calamari on top. Then we're going to cover our pan with the lid and give everything a little bit of a steam. Right, so while Marcial carries over over there, we'll come back to our gazpacho, guys. Right, so where does gazpacho come from? Traditionally, it actually comes from a town, Andalusia, in Spain. Right, um, it's a very traditional old soup, mostly from the farmers. Back in the day, they needed something that they could get all the nutrients and hydrate themselves during the course of the summer hot days. So this was the soup. I mean, you've got everything in here that will just give you all that you need, especially the red peppers. Red peppers is one of the biggest contributes to vitamin C out there at the moment, yeah? So that is fantastic. You've got the olive oil, you've got the tomatoes, everything is so beautifully and fresh. It's fantastic. So what we're gonna start with here, I will start with my capsicum, my red bell peppers. I'm gonna throw that into my jug. Great, take your spoon, let's get all of that, just not waste the thing. Right, so peppers are in. Then I'm gonna start with my cucumber. Let's get some awesome layers going on here. Great, some cucumber can go in. Then we are going to add our tomatoes, which is your main ingredient. Okay. We are going to add some more tomatoes, right? For this recipe, compared to the recipe that you will all see and have, I've actually doubled the recipe just so you can get a nice, beautiful amount, right? So what do we have in here already? We got our peppers, our cucumber, and our tomatoes. Now I'm going to throw in some onions. Wow, look at all those layers. Can you just imagine all of that actually coming together? That is great. A beautiful rainbow. Beautiful rainbow colors, yeah? Awesome. Definitely. Okay, so that is looking good. Right, I'm going to take my tomato juice. Right, I'm going to throw that inside. Oh. Right, I'm going to take my olive oil, extra virgin. Throw that inside. Fantastic. And then I'm using some apple cider vinegar. Yeah, I'm going to throw that inside. Great. Then I have cloves. Okay, you don't need to chop them, just throw them in. That's not a problem. Then we have our bread. Our bread was soaked in water. All right, this is just going to give body to our soup. All you need to do here is just give it a little soak and just squeeze some of that water out. Yes, yeah, some of you might think it's gross, but it's not. It's one of the main ingredients that you want to have in your gazpacho. Traditionally, you actually want to use nice stale bread. Not stale, stale that it's like stale from a week ago, but meaning bread that's maybe two, three days old is what you actually want. Right, then some iced water, right? I've just had some ice and some water, in there, just going, I'm gonna throw some in there. Oh, 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 this is so delicious. Right, so that's about enough. And then I've got some seasoning, so some salt, got some salt in there, a little bit of black pepper, definitely. Mm. That's gonna be delicious. Right, so now, so chef, now I would want to close this up and I would want to blend it up. Unfortunately, I'm not going to do that in front of you due to our microphone, which is very, very sensitive. So I have already made one. After blending it up, yeah, you would want to put it inside the fridge and actually just let it chill for about 30 minutes to one hour. Even 30 minutes is more than enough. And then you would just blend it up you can either strain it if you like. Straining it, you won't get so much of that pulp inside of your soup. Each to their own. I like it a little bit pulpy. Today I actually strained mine, which is perfectly fine. Not a problem with that. Okay. 
So just imagine that I actually am just coming to the side and I'm popping it over there and I'm just giving it a little blend. There we are. Right, straining it, obviously use a nice strainer, colander, put it in there, get a spoon, push it all out. There won't be that much pop, to be honest. It'll just be a little bit at the end. Right, so we'll grab that soup out of the fridge, the chef. Thank you. So that's been chilled for the past hour, hour and a half already. Mine is already done. Let's just get rid of this. Thank you, chef. Right, so there is my soup. That is already done. It looks beautiful. Nice color, nice flavors, purely awesome. If you have to have this soup first and then jump onto your paella, oh, this paella is already smelling so great. All I'm getting is fantastic flavors coming out. So now you can see everything is getting a little bit more cooked. I can start smelling it. Eventually, even if you do start smelling this like little burnt smell, don't worry about it. That is all part of the paella. You can turn it down a little bit. Near the end, when you're almost done, actually put up the heat just a little bit, right? That's going to create that sukurat, that lovely caramelized piece of rice at the bottom, and that's what you want. Right, so at this stage now, Chef, throw in that calamari because we don't want it to actually get two oh i can already feel that sukurat's already starting that is great oh chef are you going to cook this this weekend for your family yes sir i hope so <laughs> right so I'm, I'm just going to jump in here quickly i'm just going to have a little quick steal of this rice i want to see where i actually am with this paella mm. delicious it's delicious. Yummy. It's definitely delicious. Right. So the calamari is going to go on top. The squid will add a little bit more stock in there. Yeah. Just so it doesn't burn too much. This is looking fantastic. Look at those colors. Right. So now I will just take a little bit of seasoning as well. And at this stage, I'm just going to throw a little bit of salt on there. Oh, this is looking great. This Good is smell. looking so great. This room, guys, if only you could actually be in this room right now and getting all the smell guaranteed. I'm going to have a few people looking around into this room trying to steal my paella a little bit later. Right, so once we have all our squid in there, we will reclose our paella pots. We'll even throw in our green frozen peas and then we'll reclose the pan and then we'll just let it steam in its own heat for a little bit. Right, so let's finish off this beautiful gazpacho. Right, so you may serve the gazpacho any way that you would like, okay? So today I'm gonna go in beautiful little shot glasses, okay? You could go in little martini glasses, you could go into, uh, into a bowl, or anything that you prefer, nothing is wrong when it comes to cooking as well. You be the chef that you want to be. Now I'm just going to give that a beautiful little stir. Now I'm going to be pouring it in. So you can see it's not that chunky, right? It's just pouring nice and beautifully. Okay, a little bit there. Pull this one up. Great. Oh, this is so great. I mean, even when it comes to gazpacho, guys, there are so many variations in these days of gazpacho. I mean, you can get the green gazpacho, so leave out the tomatoes. Now you even get a mango gazpacho, which I was actually wanting to share with you, but I decided to go for more the traditional, right? But can you imagine an awesome mango gazpacho? That must be amazing. All right, you get the green gazpacho, you get the white gazpacho. Um, so many different variations in these days that, you know, I mean, even if you wanted to be a little bit cheeky and you wanted to add in a little bit of Tabasco into your gazpacho, might not be so traditional. But you know what? Sometimes a recipe is only a recipe. You as a chef 
you decide to throw in your little tricks and actually make it yours. I like adding a little bit of Tabasco sometimes, especially when I would even throw in an oyster into my gazpacho shots. So imagine like an oyster gazpacho shot on a buffet or even for your family, maybe those that don't really like oysters that much. Fantastic, it's great. Right, so let me just pop that over there. Oh, that can actually just go there. Thank you, Chef. Right, so now as a little garnish, what I've decided to make, I've made a little crude, cute little slice of crude. I've got all the components that are actually in there. Yeah, I've got my cucumber, my peppers, I have a little bit of yellow pepper in there, and that is just gonna go pretty on top. Okay. So before you have your little shooter, which should be chilled, you have a little bite of this bread, get that texture all in there, and yum. You're just really, really enjoying that to the max. Okay, so that is our gazpacho, one of the traditional soups of Spain, which has just made its way worldwide. And now everybody pretty much knows it and wants it. Yeah? Okay, so do we have maybe any questions? Over to you, Shanaz. Yes, Chef Sergio. They had a number of questions about I don't use wine. What can I add? What kind of rice is that? Will I get okay. it where I live? So I managed to answer all that on the chat. Okay. Okay. And Thank uh, you. probably we should go ahead to a poll. Okay, yes, so I'll poll. yes, we'll do a poll on the gazpacho. Okay. Because this is a very important question. How long can you keep your how long before can you make your gazpacho for your guests? So let's wait and see as the answers come along. Definitely. I'm curious yes. to see what people are thinking. So how long can you store the gazpacho in the refrigerator without it losing its flavor, its fresh flavor? Okay, so uh, we've got quite a number of good answers. So 70% say 12 hours and 25% uh, say 24 hours. So what is it, Chef? So the correct answer would be 12 hours, guys, right? So if you want a beautiful soup, right, which still has all its natural flavors and the sweeteners and all of it, and it's just the freshest it can be, definitely 12 hours. So once it gets to 24 hours, it can actually start to change a little bit of color, start losing a little bit of flavor. And once it gets to 24 hours, hmm, depending on how cold your fridge is, it could actually start going a little bit on the sour side, obviously because of your acidic liquid that you might have in there. So the right answer is definitely 12 hours. 12 hours, yes. Okay, so moving back to our pie here. That is just looking great. We are not gonna throw any more liquid in there. The rice is pretty much 90% there. I'm just gonna take some green peas, right? Frozen green peas, and I'm just gonna throw that on top, right? Just for a little bit of yummy flavor, right? And obviously the color that just pops over this paella is just on another level. Oh. That is just looking and smelling fantastic. Looks like I actually love that word a lot because I keep using it. It's, it's the only word I can actually think about right now when I look at this fire, just all these colors, all the smells, all these flavors just coming out. Are you winning there? Has our oven just suddenly decided to switch off our stovetop? It's on, okay. So great. So now at this stage, We'll just pop that over there, right? We've got our peas on. We're gonna take a little bit of parsley. We're gonna sprinkle some parsley over it as well. Don't overdo it. Just a nice little pinch over will be fantastic. Once again, fantastic. So, now what I like doing at the end, all right? Serving your paella, you definitely want lemons in your paella. Yes, some people might want to put the lemons on top of the paella. Yes, nothing wrong with that, to be honest. Um, what we will do now, we will just cover up a paella just for the last two minutes, just to steam those peas a little bit. But then I'm gonna take my lemons. All I've done, I have just 
taken my lemons and I've just sliced it down the middle, right? And then those are going to go just around my pan, right? The reason I do that is just the lemon actually stays cold and the lemon actually just stays as a lemon. If you put it on top of your paella, sometimes it actually goes in and then the lemons actually go a little bit soft and warm. So it's not as appealing, especially when you put it onto a plate and you squeezy warm lemon juice over your paella. So I like putting it on the side. It's easy to handle, easy to take off, easy to, you know, still squirt over your dish. Right. So paella is almost done. Definitely almost done. Those peas are there. Those peas only literally need a minute or two. Great. I'll actually just take a little bit of a last taste of our paella. When you get to this stage, oh, that sukurat is there. I can feel it. I'm so, so happy. Right. I'm just going to let some of this go down a little. Oh, that's looking good. It smells good. It smells great, doesn't it? Especially, you know, you want to use also a, a good paprika and a good saffron as well. Okay. But that is pretty much done. I'm going to have a last little taste of it. See how is my seasoning. Mmm. Mmm. Happy. Happy. Okay. I might just give a last little, just a last little dash of salt just on there. That's great. And maybe just a little pepper. Okay, that is looking great. Right, so now I'm going to start adding in my lemons. So very easy, as you see, I've cut them like that. All we do, we just start laying them around our pan. So I truly hope that you will take what you've learned from me and maybe try this out on your next family event, right? Because this is really one dish to blow your guests away, especially when as soon as they walk into your house and they get that smell of seafood and paprika and saffron. Sure, Chef, you can help me with that, definitely. All right, there's nothing like the smell, guys. It's just on another level of awesomeness. Right, oh, can you smell that sukurats already happening? You know, so don't be scared if you start smelling like, oh my gosh, it's burning. No, it is not burning. That is the sukurat that's happening. That's one of the three main things you want from a paella. Right, this looks absolutely divine. And I just find doing your lemons like this just adds so much character to your dish. It really does. Right. I think that's more than enough. Oh, well, we got a few. Let's just pop them on, Chef. Let's not waste. Make it look really pretty. Okay. So, now, I am super happy with this paella. Paella is completely done. Right. All I'm going to do here, this handle is a little bit warm. Right. So, now, I'm going to take it. Traditionally, even if you would like, you may take your paella out, you may cover it with some tin foil, yeah? And then you may leave it and just cook in its own heat for the next five to 10 minutes. Nothing wrong with that, all right? So this paella is done. Put that in front of the family and whew, what more could you honestly ask for with a paella like that? Right, I'm super happy. I see my cameraman licking their lips already. I see people looking through the door because they can smell it. Right, so that is the end. Super, two easy recipes from Spain. Right, I hope you have enjoyed this season, this episode of Spain with me, Chef Sergio, Chef Marcial. Thank you so much for joining me today. My beautiful team at the back making this all possible. And I hope that you will definitely try this recipe Please share, tag us in your social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on all of it. Tag us in your gazpacho, in your paella. I want to see what you guys have learned from me, yeah? 
And then obviously next week I'll be back. I'm not going to give you a hint where I'm taking you next week, but I think it can even compete to this again. As last week we were in Portugal, this week I'm in Spain. Next week I'm going to blow your mind once more. So thank you very much for joining us at ICCA Live and take care and God bless. Over to you, Mission Nats. Thank you, Sergio. That was delicious and looks so appetizing. I'm sure that everyone at ICCA who is watching watching your show will come rushing this side as soon as this webinar, as I'm talking, in fact. Uh, standing and waiting for a pie to be done before you can get a serve is indeed an amazing experience, one which you can easily replicate at home with your family and friends. So do try it out and be adventurous with meat and seafood together in one dish. Hope you enjoyed this demo. Stay tuned for our next webinar with Chef Sabine uh, on contemporary desserts on Sunday. Same time, same place. Over to you, Karun. Thank you, Shanaz. Uh, thank you, Chef Sergio, for this session. My God, you know, this particular uh, paella is absolutely breathtaking. This amazing smell of seafood. And I can't wait to try it after the show. For those who missed out the complete live action, an email will soon follow with a replay video of this webinar together with the handout as well. And we encourage you to recreate these dishes and share them on your social media platforms by tagging at ICA Dubai. We look forward to seeing you in the next, ses next session that is on Sunday with, with Chef Sabine. Until then, goodbye from all of us here.